we're going to talk today about what is the Bible and why should you read it? So let's start off with the basic question. What is the Bible? The Bible is the word of God. It's also the historical account of the world and God's relationship with it and his people. This relationship is described through following a specific lineage of people, writings over thousands of years by many different people. It was later organized into testaments, books, verses for easier study and reference. So there's a lot of books in the Bible. And it has the Old Testament, which includes the uh, Pentateuch, which is the history from creation to about 1805 BC, according to Bible charts and maps. And if you look on your screen, you'll see a list of the books that are in the Bible. We are following the family lineage of a man named Jacob, who God renamed Israel. God makes a covenant with his chosen people the Israelites. The covenant is if they keep God's laws, they will be blessed and prosper. If they don't, they will be miserable. So there's, after you go through the Pentateuch, you're going to continue through this lineage and you're going to get the historical books, the books of poetry and wisdom, the books that talk, that are from the major prophets, which are called the major prophets because those books are longer in length. And then you have the minor prophets, whose books are shorter in length. So here's a spoiler alert. The Israelites fail at keeping up their end of the bargain to keep up the covenant with God. So on to the good news. God did not want to be separated from his people, even though they messed up. So he enacted a plan that he had from the very beginning. He sent someone who could pay for the mistakes of everyone. We're talking past, present, future sins not just for his chosen people, but for the entire world. This someone was Jesus. So that brings us into the Gospels. The Gospels start us off in the New Testament, and they are Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You'll see that on the screen. And the Gospels are actual eyewitness and researched accounts of Jesus and his ministry, much of which includes his miracles, the miracles he performed, his explanation of the scriptures, calling out the mistakes being made by the Jewish leaders and his death and resurrection. Next, you'll see Acts. And that's what happened after the resurrection and what the apostles did to spread the word, followed by the letters written by Paul. Um, these letters were written by apostles and others, and they include the books that you see on the screen. And then that the last book of the Bible is Revelation, which is one of my favorites. Right. It's a great one. Uh, that's a it's a it's kind of like a very cryptic, prophetic account of how the world will end. Some say. Yes. Uh, so a bit of a spoiler alert, because the penalty for sin is death. Jesus paid that price for every sin committed by every person when he died. But he came back. His resurrection had many purposes. But the one I'll mention here is that his resurrection proved he was the son of God. Instead of the old covenant where you have to follow the law perfectly, which is impossible, Jesus enacted the new covenant. This new covenant says you can accept Jesus as your savior who paid the price of death for your sins. If you believe Jesus is the son of God and died for your sins, you can live with him and the father for eternity. So. Now that you know a little bit about what the Bible is, maybe we should talk a little bit about why you should read it. Should you even read it? I already gave, we gave you the spoiler alert. Should you even bother reading the Bible? And the answer is yes. Yes, emphatically yes, yes. you should read it. Why? Because the reason you should read the Bible, there's a few reasons. The first of which is it's God's message to us. It's his way of speaking to us. Um, even when you can't hear him audibly, all the words in the Bible will speak to you directly. The Bible is the written word, but Jesus was the living word. Reading the Bible, New or Old Testament, is like sitting down with Jesus himself. It, it can enrich your personal relationship with God, and it has so many wonderful insights that can help you to live your, your best life, to be the best version of yourself. 
And one of the other big things that's great about reading the Bible is it helps you to avoid being deceived. There's so many people and denominations that will make claims about the Bible that simply are not true. If you don't read it for yourself, you won't, you'll never know. And so if you do read it for yourself, you won't be deceived. And another question you can always ask yourself is, am I worshiping in the right place? So most denominations actually differ based on their own, their, their differences in their interpretation of the scriptures. So be sure that you are worshiping in a denomination that has an accurate understanding of the scriptures and that you agree with their interpretation of it. Um, so lastly, we just want to say that um, there are different translations of the Bible. Um, you know, choose the one that is re reliable and that you can understand. Uh, King James Version is reliable, but can often be difficult to understand for many people. Um, there are some other options that are more reliable and easier to understand. The New King James Version, the NASB. New American Standard Bible. That's, that's NASB. And then if you just want plain English, you can do the NLT. It's not that it's not reliable, but it's not a word for word or phrase for phrase. It's like, it kind of sometimes I'll paraphrase it, I think is my understanding of it. So, but it's, uh, it's very easy to read and understand, and it'll get you through it if, it if you've tried to read the Bible before and it was just too complicated. So we thank you for your time, and we pray that this finds you well, and we pray that it finds you in the Word. Amen.